Long ago, in the lands of the ancient Aztecs, the primordial god Ometeoto gave birth to four deities known as the Tezcatlipoca. Each of them represented a cardinal direction and a color. Jipe Totec, the god of the east in red, was one of these powerful gods. His name meant Our Lord the Flayed. Since his creation, he felt a great connection with life and death, resurrection, agriculture, vegetation, and diseases. Jipe Totec stood out among his brothers. His skin shone like polished gold, his eyes burned with fire, and his voice boomed like thunder in the mountains. The other gods looked at him with admiration and awe. The Tezcatlipoca had an enormous responsibility to maintain the balance of the cosmos. Jipe Totec, although young, understood the magnitude of his duty. His nature was linked to transformation and regeneration. He was known among the gods for his bravery and willingness to sacrifice. Jipe Totec grew in wisdom and power, observing the world he and his brothers helped to shape. As the god of the East, Jipe Totec was associated with dawn, renewal, and the beginning of new cycles. His color, red, symbolizes blood, life, and the vital force that flows through all living beings. Jipe Totec was represented as a huge man without eyes or skin, with his muscles exposed, always carrying the freshly flayed skin of a sacrifice. This was dyed yellow on one side and tawny on the other. He carried a chikawazdal, a rattle that called for rain and ensured the fertility of the land. His powers not only included the control of crops, but also the ability to propagate or cure diseases, underscoring his duality as both a giver and taker of life. Jipe Totec, together with his brothers Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca, found himself facing a colossal challenge. The terrible Tzitzimitl threatened the very existence of the universe. This monstrous creature, with sharp claws and eyes that glowed with evil, rose above the primordial void, ready to devour everything in its path. The three gods looked at each other, knowing that only together could they face such a threat. Quetzalcoatl, with his wisdom and cunning, drew up a plan. Tezcatlipoca, strong and brave, offered to be the first line of attack. Jipe Totec, for his part, would bring his power over life and death to weaken the beast. The battle was fierce. The sky and the earth, not yet fully formed, trembled with every blow. Quetzalcoatl flew around Tzitzimitl, distracting her with his shining feathers while Tezcatlipoca attacked her with his smoking mirror. Zipe Totec, from a distance, launched rays of vital energy that gradually sapped the creature's strength. But Tzitzimitl was powerful. With one swipe, she sent Tezcatlipoca flying. With a roar, he almost succeeded in trapping Quetzalcoatl in his jaws. It was then that Shipe Totec decided to risk everything. He advanced towards the beast, his golden body shining with a blinding light. While his brothers recovered, Shipe Totec confronted Tzitzimitl face to face. The creature tried to devour him, but the god was elusive. In one swift move, Jipe Totec slipped between the beast's claws and, using his power over life, began to drain Tsitsimitl's energy from within. The monstrous creature howled in pain and rage, flailing violently to free itself from Jipe Totec. But the god held on with all his strength, continuing his work. Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca, seeing the opportunity, launched a joint attack. In a burst of light and power, Tzitzimitl was finally defeated. His body disintegrated into millions of particles that scattered into the void, forming the first stars. Exhausted but victorious, the three gods contemplated their work. From Tzitzimitl's body, the stars were born, and from the void he left behind, space emerged to create the world. Jipe Totec, still panting from the effort, looked at his brothers and smiled. He knew that this was only the beginning, that there was still much to do. 
It was a long time before Shipe Totec was again the protagonist. This time it was in the creation of the fifth son. Nanahuatzin and Tekuchid's Tekatl illuminated the world with the fifth son, giving life to the fifth humanity. However, the gods faced an urgent problem, feeding these new beings. The newly created humanity could not survive without sustenance, and Quetzalcoatl's efforts would have been in vain. The gods debated on how to solve this challenge. Amid the concern, Zipe Totec stood up and offered an unexpected solution. He proposed to sacrifice himself to germinate corn, the essential food for mankind. Zipe Totec tore off his skin and scattered it over the earth. From his flesh and eyes sprouted seeds that, upon contact with the soil, quickly germinated, giving birth to corn. Thanks to this act, humans were able to subsist and prosper. After Zeep Totec sacrificed his skin to germinate corn, humanity celebrated his gesture with festivities that became annual traditions. However, the cycle of life and death demanded more from gods and humans to ensure the continuity of harvest and the health of the land. The land, enriched by the flesh of Sipe Totec, began to produce abundant corn. The fields flourished and the harvests were more bountiful than ever. The people saw this as a direct blessing from the god, and in each ear of corn, they felt the presence and sacrifice of Zipe Totec. To ensure that this prosperity continued, humans established annual festivities and rituals in his honor. One of the main celebrations in honor of Zipe Totec was the Tlacaxipehualistli, which took place during the second month of the Aztec calendar. During this festivity, the priests organized a series of rituals inherent to honor the gods and ensure the fertility of the land for the next harvests. Preparations for Tlacaxipehualistli began with the capture of prisoners of war, who would be sacrificed in honor of Zipe Totec. These prisoners were treated with respect and fed properly, as it was believed that their sacrifice was necessary to maintain the balance between gods and humans. In the days before the sacrifice, the prisoners participated in ceremonies that prepared them for their final destiny. On the day of the sacrifice, the priests performed a solemn ceremony in the temple of Zipe Totec. The prisoners were skinned alive and their skins were used in rituals. This act was a representation of the detachment of the old to give way to the new, radiating the essence of the god. The flayed skins were placed on the priests, who wore them during dances and ceremonies, symbolizing renewal and transformation. Ritual dances were accompanied by drumming and chanting. Participants imitated the movements of Xipe Totec by taking off and putting on their skins, representing the death and resurrection of nature. These dances were not only a tribute to the god, but also a way to invoke his presence and ask for his blessing for the coming year. At another time during the festivity, competitions were organized among the warriors of the community. One of the most prominent activities was the gladiatorial, where warriors fought against prisoners tied to a stone. Although the battles were symbolic, they represented the eternal struggle for survival and the sacrifice necessary to maintain the cycle of life. The victors of these competitions were seen as protected by Sipe Totec and received respect and admiration for their courage. In addition to these great festivities, Zip Totec's influence was manifested in the daily life of the community. The priests, acting as intermediaries between the god and humans, performed essential healing rituals to maintain harmony. In the temple dedicated to Zip Tot, the priests used sacred herbs and ceremonial chants to invoke the healing power of the god. One of the most important rituals was the healing ceremony performed during the spring. The sick would gather at the temple, bringing offerings of corn, flowers, and small clay figures representing their ailments. The priests, dressed in flayed skins from previous sacrifices, led the faithful in a process of purification. Incense and candles were lit during the ceremony, creating a sacred atmosphere. 
The priests pronounced prayers and ancient chants, asking Shipe Totek to descend and grant his healing blessing. The sick, kneeling before the altar, felt a deep connection with the god, trusting in his power to restore their health. While prayers filled the air, the priests would perform anointings with sacred oils, applying them to the affected body parts. This practice was believed to transfer the healing energy of Zipe Totek to the faithful. Participants experienced a sense of relief and renewal, strengthened by the belief in the benevolent presence of the God. The ceremony culminated with a special offering. The faithful placed their clay figures in the sacred fire, symbolically delivering their ailments to Zipe Totek. The flames consumed the figures, taking the illnesses with them and leaving the participants purified and full of hope. The healing power of Zypototec was vital to their cult, and through these rituals, the community maintained a close and constant relationship with their god. Faith in Zypototec not only ensured abundant harvests, but also the health and well-being of the people, reaffirming the eternal cycle of life, death, and renewal. In daily life, the influence of Zyptotec was seen in the preparation for the harvest seasons. Before planting, the community organized a series of rituals and works to prepare the land each year. The farmers, guided by the priests, would perform ceremonies to bless the fields and ensure the soil was ready to receive the seeds. In addition to agricultural activities, Zyptotec influenced other aspects of daily life. In times of conflict or disagreements, community leaders sought guidance from the priests who consulted the signs and omens related to Zyptotec to make fair and balanced decisions. This video has been created for the Myth Comics channel. Thanks for joining us on this journey through Aztec mythology. See you next time.